Okay, here is the sheet that you have uploaded into Doc Sharing. This is also the format that I want you to do whenever you graph these on your test for Chapter 3. And this is also the format that I'm going to have available to you on your final when you take it. So really, all you have to do is just fill in the blanks. So notice the first criteria we have is we're going to write the problem here. So once we write the problem down, then you're going to do the end behavior. Here, let me do it. So we're going to write the problem first. Then we're going to look at the end behavior. The y-intercept is the same y-intercept for everything in the world. Find an x-intercept that we have going, and that's from the lessons that you did previously in sections 3, 2, and 3, 4. So we're going to practice getting our x-intercepts there, and then any extra points that we need to fill in the gaps. So let's get started with this. Okay, so here's our first problem. f of x is equal to a 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus x minus 6. The first thing we want to look at is end behavior. So we're going to look at our leading coefficient and our degree. So what's the highest degree? A 3. Good. So odd or even? Odd meaning opposite directions. Awesome. So I have um, odd degree and a positive. Who cares if that's even or odd, this too? Just simply the fact that it's a positive lead coefficient. So we have positive and odd. It starts down, some crap happens, and then we end going up. Good. So our lead coefficient test means we start down and we go up. Awesome. Now a y-intercept is a y-intercept is a y-intercept. So a y-intercept is the same for any function out there ever that you're looking at. So what we're actually trying to do with a y-intercept here is we're going to have 0 and then some number. That's a y-intercept. So if I plug a 0 in for the x's, I have f of 0, which is 2 times 0 cubed plus 5 times 0 squared minus 0 minus 6. What are you noticing happening? Yep, same thing as a quadratic in standard form. Anytime you plug a 0 in, the last number is your value. So your y-intercept here is 0, negative 6. Let's put that on the graph. So we now have the point 0, negative 6. So I'm going to count down 6. 1, oops, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and make a point. And that's my y-intercept. Cool. Now, let's do an x-intercept. Now, remember, x-intercept has three words here that all mean the exact same thing. If you find a zero, you're finding an x-intercept. So whenever you did all that synthetic division and you were working through to find the zeros, you were finding x-intercepts at that time. So that's what we're going to be looking at, is we want to find the zeros here, which are our x-intercepts. If you can factor, which is also another word for a zero, a factor, a zero, and an x-intercept are all synonymous. If you can factor, that's your best day ever. Unfortunately, on this problem, we cannot, which means we get the amazing opportunity to do that P divided by Q scenario. Let me zoom in a little bit here, and then we'll work this out. Remember, an x-intercept is always some number and zero. So if that's the case, we need to figure out what that value is. So whenever we're doing this term, and actually, you know what, I'm going to rewrite this down here to be a 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus x minus 6, and then I'm going to scoot this down so that we actually have a little bit of room to work, and that'll make it easier, I think. All right, so let's do this right now. We are going to do our P divided by Q. So remember, that's a back divided by front. If the negative 6 is my P value and 2 is my Q value, then we're going to come up with those factors. So you start with writing out your P's here. So your P is going to be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, 
plus or minus 3 and plus or minus 6. So everything that multiplies to give you a 6, so those are your factors. Then your Q here in this instance is going to be plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2. Then when you do your P divided by Q action, you're going to take all of those and divide them out. So however you want to systematically do that, that's up to you. How I like to start with my P and then take it to everything. And then my 2 and everything. So 1 divided by 1 is 1. 1 divided by 2. So 1 divided by 2 is going to be 1 half. Now remember these are listing all of the possible rational zeros. Then I go to my next term. I take 2 divided by 1 and 2 divided by 2. So 2 divided by 1 is a 2 and 2 divided by 2 here is 1. So I don't need to write that again. We'll go to the next one. 3 divided by 1 is going to be 3 and then 3 divided by 2 is going to be a 3 halves. Notice I'm putting plus or minus on everything because it can be positive or negative. And then lastly, we're going to look at the 6. So we have 6 divided by 1 and 6 divided by 2. Now 6 divided by 1 is going to give me 6. And 6 divided by 2 is a 3. And we already have it, so we don't need to write it again. Now these are our possible rational zeros. And remember, the only way we can figure this out, start doing your synthetic division. So let's do it right now. Okay, and 1 or negative 1 is usually a pretty good bet. So let's try with 1 and see what happens. So you write out your coefficients, 2, 5, negative 1, negative 6. Remember, if you have any that are blank, you have to like a, a degree that's blank, you have to put a placeholder, but we're good, we're at 3, 2, 1, 0. So drop that 2, giving me a 2, then you multiply what's in the box. 1 times 2 is 2, and that goes up here. Then you add, giving you 7. Come back around and do your multiplication. 7 times 1 is 7. You add to give you 6. 6 times 1 is 6, and that's 0, and our best day ever. And remember, if you have a remainder of zero, then you actually have a zero, which means on this problem that one is one of my x-intercepts because it gives me a remainder of zero, so I know it divides evenly, giving me an x-intercept. Right on. Then I take this 2, 7, and 6, and that gives me a 2x squared plus 7x plus 6, and as soon as you have a quadratic, then you don't have to do your synthetic division anymore. You want to factor your quadratic. If it's non-factorable, then you can use the quadratic formula in order to come up with your zeros. However, hint, 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 and spoiler alert, these will always factor because I'm not going to give you something freaky deaky that you have to try to find x-intercepts on. So it will always factor. So you have a 2x and an x. Both signs are plus, so you need to keep the plus and the plus. And remember, times 6 is 2 times 3, but I can't put a 2 up here in the front because then it would have a 2 in common. So the only thing that's going to go in this front set can be a 3, and the 2 has to go in the back. Then you check your outsides and insides, and it gives you 4 plus 3 is the 7 that we want. Right on. Okay, I'm going to erase that to get it out of the way here. So we do the check to make sure our outsides and insides work. And then we set this equal to zero because we are looking at our zeros. So we now have 2x plus 3 equals zero and x plus 2 is zero. So x is a negative 3 halves and x is a negative 2. Now, Remember our fundamental theorem of algebra that we've talked about in the past? Look up here at the degree of my polynomial. It's a 3. How many zeros or x-intercepts 
did we come up with here? One, two, three. Da -da 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 -da. That is not a coincidence. That is a fundamental theorem of algebra. Whatever the highest degree is of your polynomial, that is how many x-intercepts you can expect to have. Pretty cool, huh? It's just a way to check yourself. Cool. So, let's do it right now. Let's go ahead and graph these three points. So, I actually have the point on my graph of 1, 0. And this negative 3 halves, I'm gonna actually going to change to negative 1 and a half. I'm just taking my um, improper fraction and changing it to a mixed number. Then I have the point negative 2, 0. So now I have three x-intercepts. Let's go ahead and go back up to our graph and plot those points. Okay, I want to try to make this as big as we can see it because some of these points are super close together. So I have the point of 1, 0. I have the point of negative 1 and a half, so it's halfway between here that I'm looking at. And I have the point of negative 2. So those points are almost right on top of each other right there that are super close. Okay, cool. Now, now let's bring this to where we can see it. And we have end behavior. Now your end behavior goes off of your x-intercepts. So I know from this far right x-intercept, my graph is going up. From the far left x-intercept, my graph is going down. So your graph end behavior goes off of that, which tells me I'm going to loop up, come back down, and go around. Now, a polynomial graph is smooth and continuous. That means it's very curvy, and it hits the values that you're going for. The big deal whenever it comes to extra points is if you actually need extra points, you're going to be looking for any gaps between the x-intercepts. So if you have any gaps between your x-intercepts, that's when you're looking for this. However, in this graph, I'm gonna zoom in here so that we can draw on it a little bit better. On this particular graph, you can see that you're going up and you're not gonna go up very far. These basically are right on top of each other. And then I'm gonna go down, hit my y-intercept, and then back up. For these graphs, you can basically just wing it. So I'm going to make my line here a little bit thicker so that you can see it a little bit better. Goes through those intercepts, comes back down, and then back up. And then it ends going up with our axis. Smooth and continuous, a very curvy graph. So I really don't have any gaps, as you can see. Really, the between these two points, there's next to nothing between the point of negative one and a half and one, I have my y-intercept. So as long as you can wing it, I'm good with that. Now, I know your graphing calculator will do most of this work, but look at all the work that we showed for this problem. This is what I expect to see on your papers. So for these problems, I expect you to show all of the work necessary, not just to graph something off your graphing calculator. Cool, let's try another one.